It's a whole lot of bad news for Fallout fans. Multiplayer might be the future for From Software, and the Helldivers 2 community saves the children. I'm Matt Simpson, this is Jinx News. While Fallout has arguably never been more popular, what with the Amazon series being a resounding success and the ensuing resurgence of game downloads, it's not all roses and muck fruit in the wasteland. You see, in an extended interview with YouTuber Mr. Matty Plays, Bethesda head Todd Howard poured water over any rumours that a new Fallout game is on the horizon. He claimed that the TV show scratches that itch while we wait for another game. And while he understands how much we might all want a Fallout 5, these games do take time. And yes, that applies for Elder Scrolls and Starfield too. In fairness, Bethesda have been hard at work fixing Fallout 76, which many new Fallout fans have been jumping into. So there has been some fresh gaming content from the IP. It might actually be worth giving it a go now if you were burnt the first time around. Plus, that game does show what happens when an open world title is rushed out. While it would have been great to have a new game to coincide with the TV series, pushing something half-baked out the door just because the show did alright hardly seems sensible from a developer with this kind of track record. However, it's actually worse news for fans of the OG Fallout games, as Howard went on to say that there are currently no plans to remake the classic titles or port them to console. There had been rumours swirling around about the potential for Fallout 1, 2 and tactics to get remakes or modern versions, but evidently these were just rumours. But there is a fan-led Fallout 2 remake called Project Arroyo in the works, and it's being made in the Fallout 4 creation engine, much like the highly anticipated Fallout London. So while there are no Fallout games in Bethesda's immediate future, it might be fan-made content that keeps the franchise going for the foreseeable. So how do you feel about this news? Disappointed we won't be getting any new Fallout video games? Or oh, happy Bethesda seem to have learnt their lesson? Hit me up! down below. We're nearly there folks, Elden Ring's long-awaited expansion Shadow of the Earth Tree is finally out on Friday. And as you'd expect, the game's creative director Hidetaka Miyazaki has been on the press circuit. And as well as promoting what must be one of the most anticipated video game expansions in history, he's been addressing all manner of questions from fans of the Souls series. For those who don't know, Seamless Co-op was created by some clever people to essentially allow players to buddy up with their friends and play the entire game in co-op. Usually, this would only be restricted to one particular area or boss encounter. Asked on whether he'd consider implementing this in one of his base games in the future, Miyazaki said, It's definitely not something we actively oppose or want to downplay wanting to go through the whole game together. In terms of where we were with Elden Ring, it was simply a case of wanting that more loose, casual style. Drop in, defeat a boss, drop out. That's not to say we won't consider other ways, like you and your friends playing together from beginning to end in total co-op. That's not to say we won't consider ideas like that with our future games. This is potentially very exciting news for fans of From Software, who focus more on summoning or PvP. The multiplayer aspects of From Software titles have always been innovative and had the scope to develop into something truly incredible. It will be great to see them work on a game that fully focuses on this aspect and potentially breaks new ground for the genre. But while we're on the subject of questioning from software, there's another massive elephant in the room. Bloodborne has been stuck on PlayStation since its initial release in 2015. And sure, you can play it on PS5. However, technology has left its 30 FPS limitations behind, not to speak of the potential for mods like Seamless Co-op on PC. Well, a journalist at PC Gamer asked the question to Miyazaki, and the response? wasn't entirely negative. He referred to his development team and said, I know for a fact these guys want a Bloodborne PC port. If I say I want one, I'll get in trouble. But it's nothing I'm opposed to. Well, it's not a no. Clearly, there's a lot of legal wranglings behind the scenes that make it hard for him to say much more, but maybe, just maybe, we'll get a Bloodborne PC port one day. While you're waiting for it, though, there's Shadow of the Erd Tree. And even if you don't pick it up straight away, there'll still be some free DLC coming for all players, including new hairstyles, better ways to manage your inventory, and improvements to the summoning pools. But make sure not to spoil anything if you do play. Don't take that from me, take that from FromSoft. But also from me, it will take me a while to get through it all. Even though the general discussion of Helldivers 2 has quietened down over recent months, the game's community is still very much going strong. At time of recording, there's around 78,000 daily concurrence on Steam, and the developers at Arrowhead have worked hard to ensure it receives regular new content updates. However, it's not all good news for fans, as the developers have confirmed there will not be a single-player story mode coming to Helldivers 2. Responding to a commenter on Twitter, newly appointed CEO Shams Jorjani confirmed a story mode is not happening, affirming that doing that 
would be like building an entirely new game. For fans of single player, this is a shame. Helldivers 2 is mechanically extremely solid, with a light-hearted tone and world building that seems ideal to write a story around. However, Arrowhead have been very clear on what Helldivers 2 is, and more importantly, what it isn't. During the game's heights in popularity, the developers were being asked constantly if PvP would be introduced. And again, they said no. Clearly they know what they want to make, and I admire them for that. It means you can focus on creating the best co-op PvE experience, focusing on quality, not quantity, and creating content around that single idea. And hey, it's clearly worked. The game was a runaway success and has a passionate fan base dedicated to it. Oh, and that fan base, by the way, are a bunch of really nice people, as evidenced by what happened during the recent Vernon Wells rescue event. Basically, players had the choice to rescue a group of unknown trapped survivors or abandon them to search for materials to build anti-tank mines. But the good folks gave up personal gain to help those survivors, who turned out to be children. It shows what sort of an audience the game has cultivated. I mean, could you imagine a Call of Duty lobby or GTA Online team doing the same? Nah, me neither. In response to this goodwill, Arrowhead donated $4,311, the same number as those rescued, to the Save the Children Foundation. They also shared a very wholesome message sent from the surviving children in-game, saying, thank you so much for saving us. They told us you made a lot of sacrifices to help us. We'll always be grateful. Now we can grow up to become Helldivers too, alongside this adorable image. This is honestly just all so lovely and cuddly. It feels weird coming from a game about annihilating hundreds of thousands of aliens into giblets, to be honest. Let me know if you're still playing Helldivers 2 or whether this story is making you think of jumping back in. Check your thoughts down in the comments. And that's almost it for today. But before we go, over the weekend, the Jinx team were at the Counter-Strike Blast Premier Spring Final watching Team Spirit take victory over home favourites Na'Vi. We filmed some vlogs, spoke to fans, and got all the insight backstage from the event. So if you want to know more or just see inside an esports event, visit our Jinx TV YouTube channel. And of course, subscribe to Jinx Plus, where you can support our content, as well as access exclusive first hour episodes and a bunch of our old shows. Ash will be back on Wednesday, so normal service will return to Jinx News then.